The story begins with 21-year-old Cameron, who is being forced by his father to decide his plans after high school. Cameron's mother sides with him, while his father insists on thinking about his future. Cameron couldn't care less. He has no ambitions or goals, and that frustrates his dad, who has forbidden him from driving a car unless he pays off the insurance. Frustrated after a heated argument with his father, Cameron heads to the ice cream shop where he works. He asks for a day off from his boss since he has a date. Later, when Cameron is on his way home, he gets a glimpse of Diane's sunbathing outside in her yard. He takes out his phone to check her messages when Chad and Jason, Diane's friends, suddenly arrive and smash Cameron's phone. The scuffle catches Diane's attention, and she arrives at the scene. The two boys report to her that they have seen Cameron taking her pictures. However, Cameron denies the accusations and tells her they had been communicating. So why would he take photos without her consent? Diane gets confused and reveals to him that she has never messaged him. This confuses Cameron, and he decides to show her the texts. But before he could pick up his phone from the road, a truck runs over it, destroying the gadget. Cameron leaves with a puzzled expression. Later that night, he is sitting in his room when he sees a girl, Victoria, from his window, in the house across from his. He starts to spy on her when suddenly, his mom arrives and calls him for dinner. He immediately closes the curtains. His mom gets suspicious and asks about the darkness in the room. He ignores the question, not wanting to disclose his questionable behavior. As she leaves, he immediately closes the door, switches off the lights, and decides to spy on the girl again. However, as he pulls the curtains open, Victoria is standing at the window, glaring at him. Startled, Cameron quickly closes the curtains and goes downstairs. After dinner, someone rings the bell. Cameron checks through the peephole and finds Victoria standing before him, smiling eerily. However, when he opens the door, he finds Diane outside instead. He asks her if she has seen anyone else leaving the place, but she denies. Diane claims that she is trying to avoid Chad and Jason, and they both leave for their date. The two are enjoying their pizza at the restaurant when one of Cameron's friends, Martin, comes over. Later, when they return, Diane looks uneasy. She seems reluctant to express her feelings to Cameron. He is about to leave when Diane finally tells him what is bothering. At her prom, Martin asked her to be his date and later bailed on her. Diane felt humiliated for going to prom without a date. Cameron tries to console her. All of a sudden, he catches a glimpse of Victoria standing beside the car, eavesdropping on them. He is violently startled, but she vanishes the next instant. Cameron gets distracted and says goodbye to Diane, hurriedly heading to his house. He quickly climbs the stairs and enters his room. As he peeps through his window, he finds Victoria standing at her window, staring straight at him. He is caught red-handed and closes the curtain. Suddenly, he hears something behind him. He turns around, and to his horror, she is standing before him. He picks up the torch to defend himself and wonders out loud how she entered his room. She ignores his question and asks him why he is snooping on her. Cameron feels uneasy and asks her to leave, but oddly, she seeks help from Cameron. When he denies it, she threatens to complain to his parents about him spying on her. Ultimately, he has no choice but to help her. She asks him to drive her to some far-off location. During the journey, she starts interrogating him about his age and hobbies. When he asks about her in return, she ignores every single question. When they reach, Victoria seizes his car keys and wants him to wait there until she completes her business. She walks to the building, and a security guard comes and opens the door. Cameron keeps waiting inside the car. After a while, he decides to go look around. He exits the vehicle and walks toward the building where Victoria disappeared into. Suddenly, he sees the same guard who had opened the door, limping toward him, asking for help. His hands are bleeding, and his face is covered in scratches. Terrified, Cameron runs back to his car and locks himself inside. The guard stands against the car, pleading for help. When Victoria emerges from behind and sinks her fangs into his neck, Cameron freaks out and tries to run away. But Victoria stops him and asks him to take her home. Victoria proclaims Cameron as her trusted lackey and wants him to be her driver forever. Cameron retaliates. He feels terrified in her presence. He does not want anything to do with her, but Victoria threatens him with the same fate as the poor security guard if he goes against her wishes. Cameron is aware of her unique abilities, having witnessed her atrocities firsthand. The following morning, Cameron is woken up by his mother and his dad calls him downstairs immediately. He knows his dad would interrogate him, so he decides to speak the truth. His dad inquires about all the blood smeared on his car. But before Cameron can utter a word, Victoria arrives at the scene and greets his father. She immediately tells him a made-up story about a bleeding deer lying beside their car. His father buys the story, 
Victoria appears to him as an innocent young girl. Of course she must be more trustworthy than his own son. Before leaving, Victoria seeks permission from his father for Cameron to drive her around for some errands, and he agrees to it. Martin visits Cameron in the ice cream shop the following day. He confesses to bailing on Diane for various reasons. He tries to explain his situation to Cameron and admits that he feels stupid around her despite his feelings for her. He begs Cameron to convince Diane to give him another chance. Regardless of his love for Diane, Cameron agrees to persuade her. He does not feel delighted and tries to hide his feelings from Martin. Later, Cameron visits Diane and conveys Martin's message about asking for another chance. She wonders if this would be a good idea and eventually agrees to it. Later in the night, Cameron waits for Victoria beside his car to drive her around for her so-called errands, but she is nowhere to be found. He wonders if she is coming and hopes that she doesn't. At the same instant, she sneaks up on him from behind and he almost has a heart attack. He forbids her from doing anything like that ever again. They both get in the car and drive to a house. The place is dark and looks deserted. Like before, Cameron waits inside the car as Victoria leaves. The time slowly passes by and he is lost in his thoughts, when suddenly something falls before him and the windscreen of his car gets splattered with blood. When he opens the car door, a lifeless body lies in front of him on the street. Cameron freaks out and slams his car door shut. Simultaneously, Victoria enters the car, licking her bloody finger. Cameron is petrified, yet disgusted. After cleaning his vehicle, Cameron leaves for his house without saying anything else. He goes straight to his room, checks through his window, and finds Victoria standing in her room across the street, staring at him. He feels furious and exhausted. He closes his curtains and goes straight to bed. In the middle of the night, Cameron wakes up feeling someone's presence beside him. Turns out, it is Victoria. She tells him that they need to talk about whatever is going on. She shares that she was 16 when she was converted and is now 247 years old. She tells him that her boyfriend was slaughtered by the rival vampires. They asked her boyfriend to join them, and when he resisted, they ended his life. The cult has moved to America, which is why she is in town. Cameron asks her if she is there to take revenge on them, and she nods. He then asks her if she is slaughtering humans too, but she denies. Cameron feels a little relaxed. Perhaps Victoria is less of the monster he imagined her to be. The following day, he finds Martin standing outside his house. Martin tells him that he texted Diane, and she asked him out for a date, and now Martin was confused about what to say to her. Later, Cameron visits Diane and tells him about Martin getting anxious about their date. The guy seems to look out for everyone. That night, he asks Victoria about the number of group members she is trying to hunt. Cameron feels anxious about witnessing people assassinated before him and wants out of this mess. Victoria tells him that she still needs to locate one vampire that is hiding from her. The last one is the most powerful of them all. She has been waiting to slaughter her for hundreds of years. Victoria feels furious at the last one, and she plans to peel her skin off and feed it to the rats. They both enter the building. Victoria feels confident, while Cameron cowers behind her. Victoria gets angry at him for following her around. She asks him to calm down and stay where she tells him to. Cameron stays behind as Victoria walks further. The eerie place looks like an office. Cameron hides inside one of the cubicles. Meanwhile, Victoria walks through the dark aisle, looking for her victim. The lights are flickering at some distance, and water is dripping from a faucet nearby. She keeps walking silently, trying to make no sound at all. She enters the basement, and the lights continue flickering. She cautiously looks around, trying to locate her victim. Meanwhile, Cameron is upstairs, hiding in the cubicle, when a man passes by him and enters the basement, whistling to himself. Curious, Cameron decides to follow him and creeps out of his hiding place. The man realizes the intrusion and flashes the torch around, looking for the source. He doesn't find anyone. He continues on, entering the cellar, with Cameron entering stealthily behind him. The man is unaware of Cameron and keeps looking in the basement. Finally, he catches sight of Victoria and asks her to leave the property immediately. Victoria, neglecting his orders, walks toward him and he shoots her out of desperation. Suddenly, Cameron enters from behind, trying to rescue her, but the frantic man shoots at him too. Cameron falls to the ground. When the man looks around the floor, Victoria is no longer there. She suddenly emerges from behind and butchers him. Witnessing a wounded Cameron, Victoria panics and runs toward him. She finds him lying on the floor. It turns out that Cameron was just pretending. Angered, she tells him to never follow her again, since she might be unable to save him. They both exit the building and get back to the car. Cameron asks her when will be the last time that they will be hunting down her enemies. 
She tells him that she has not figured out who her nemesis is yet, and all she knows is that it's a girl. Cameron asks Victoria for a favor. He tells her that he has to go somewhere and she needs to let him leave. She agrees and says that she will find him by following his scent. The next day, while he's working, one of his co-workers, Liz, asks Cameron to go with her to the movies. Cameron agrees. Later, he accompanies Diane and Martin on their date, trying to make things easier for them. Cameron wants to leave them alone, but they both stop him from going. As soon as Diane leaves for the bathroom, Victoria arrives and Cameron leaves with her, abandoning poor Martin. Victoria asks him about the awkward couple, and he replies that he has set them up. He says that he has been in love with the girl for the last four years. Victoria finds it odd and tells him that he must stand up for himself. Victoria accompanies him to the workplace, but he does not want to take her inside. He tells her he does not want to go there. Apparently, the two guys sitting inside are his bullies. Victoria says otherwise and insults Chad and Jason. She gives him a few insights about hitting them. Encouraged and feeling brave, Cameron walks in and attacks the bullies, doing precisely what she tells him. The bullies immediately leave the place. Celebrating his little victory, Cameron and Victoria walk out. She observes that he's in pain. Victoria hands him a potion and tells him to drink it. As soon as he does, Cameron feels better. Victoria stuns him by revealing that the potion is her blood. It has given him immense healing capability. They eventually go to the house. Later that night, Cameron is thinking about Diane, when suddenly, Victoria arrives and lies beside him. In a turn of events, they get intimate. The two are abruptly interrupted when Cameron's dad enters the room. He finds Victoria in Cameron's bed and leaves without saying a word. Oddly, Cameron asks her to leave too. He realizes that he loves Diane. He is very rude to poor Victoria, and she leaves before he can apologize for his behavior. The following day, Cameron is visited by Martin, who tells him that everything fell apart after Cameron's departure. Cameron does not want to talk and leaves without a word. Later, Victoria visits a boutique where Diane works, hoping to meet her. Meanwhile, Cameron discusses his complicated situation with Liz. The two had planned to go to a concert that night, but at the last minute, Cameron decides to visit Victoria's place first. From the window, he finds Diane sitting in Victoria's living room. The two girls seem to be chatting with each other. After a while, they both leave, and so does Cameron. Liz is waiting for Cameron and tries to contact him. But since his phone was broken, she is unable to reach him. Cameron runs upstairs to his room and peeps into Victoria's room. He finds both girls standing in front of each other. Suddenly, they start to get intimate. The following day, Cameron finds Diane leaving Victoria's place, which makes him furious. He is angry at Victoria for doing this to him and asks her to stay away from Diane, or he will tell her the truth about Victoria. He threatens Victoria that he will not help her anymore, which makes her furious. She grabs his shirt and tells him that she needs him for one more night. After that, he can do whatever he wants. Later, out of frustration, Cameron visits Martin and tells him that he will help Martin get back with Diane. Martin is more than elated now. Cameron goes to work and quits his job, still maintaining his irrational behavior. Outside, he finds Liz. She is angry at him for leaving her alone like that. It makes her sad, and she punches him before leaving. Perhaps he deserves it. He later goes to Diane's place. She tells him that Martin has asked her out again, but she does not want to go. Cameron gets a new phone from his mother, who asks him to hide it from his dad. He asks Martin to keep his earphones connected all the time so that he can communicate with Martin and tell him how to talk to Diane properly. They do a little practice, and it pays off. Diane is impressed by Martin on their date. She asks him about his earpiece, but he ignores the question. She hands Martin the keys and tells him to take her somewhere. Cameron keeps telling him to take her home, but he does not listen. They both end up in a little abandoned place. Cameron comes running after them. Martin throws the earpiece out and starts making out with Diane. Cameron is standing at a distance, helplessly witnessing everything, when suddenly Diane bites Martin. Cameron is shocked to see that Diane is just like Victoria. He runs away and finds Victoria eerily standing behind him. Frantic, Cameron rushes to the ice cream parlor and asks for Liz. When he exits, he finds Diane standing there. He inquires about Martin and she claims that he is fine. He gets confused, and she tells him that she has turned Martin into a vampire. Cameron is angry at her for not telling him all along. He asks her what will happen now. Diane cryptically tells him that she must move on, as this place is too complicated. But Cameron does not want her to leave. Later that night, when he returns home, he finds Victoria's house dark and empty. Victoria is standing in her room. She tells him that she will get her vengeance. But Cameron does not want her to do anything horrible anymore. However, he has no choice 
but to help her win her battle. Cameron's boss finds out about Diane's secret and threatens to tell everyone. Diane chases after him and ends his life. When Diane enters Cameron's house, she finds Victoria holding a knife against his throat. Both women start fighting. Victoria is furious about the love that she lost a long time ago, while Diane says that she does not know the whole story. Cameron stabs Victoria, but it does not fatally wound her. Diane finally reveals the entire story about her master turning the whole group into a bloodthirsty cult. Diane, later on, met Victoria's master, and he told her to join his cult. She had agreed, hoping to seek refuge from her own master. When Diane's master found out about her betraying him, he found and butchered Victoria's master and his people, including Victoria's boyfriend. Diane had no option but to run away from her past. Victoria apologizes for the misunderstanding. Later, both Victoria and Diane apologize to Cameron, and they leave the place for good. Since Martin and Cameron's boss have turned into vampires, they also end up leaving with Victoria and Diane. The following day, when Cameron wakes up, he is in a good mood. Cameron tells his parents that he will become a writer. His father asks what he will write about. He is surprised to know that Cameron wants to write about vampires. Later, he goes to Liz to give her an explanation and apologize for his behavior. He wants to tell her all about Victoria and Diane. Liz has no idea about the kind of story that awaits her. 